So I just wanna hop into Premiere Pro and After Effects, kinda show you my workflow and five things that I probably waited way too long to figure out. So I'm just gonna skip that process for you guys and show you the things that I wish I knew about earlier. So the first thing I wish I knew about earlier was linked compositions. It's basically taking footage from Premiere Pro and transferring into After Effects without having to render anything. And then as soon as you change something in After Effects, it instantly goes back to Premiere Pro as soon as you click save. That way you can see what it looks like in Premiere Pro and work between the two softwares. The way you use the link comp is super easy. Just highlight the clips you want to bring in After Effects, right click, go to replace with After Effects composition, and then it will open up After Effects and your clips will be there. So super easy example of just showing what you can do. If you wanted to change the color of the scene, let's go ahead and change it to this green, click Control S to save it. And then back in Premiere Pro, you can see our changes have already taken place. The main reason I find myself using link compositions is probably for like rotoscoping out clips. So I'd bring it into After Effects, rotoscope out your subject and do whatever you need to do to the background or to the subject click Control S and then bring it back into Premiere Pro. And the second thing I wish I knew a little bit earlier was how to make presets or how to use presets to speed up your workflow. Basically a preset is an effect or a collection of effects with keyframes already built in. So as soon as you drag it on there, it already has all the values changing, everything already set up. That way the effect can take place as soon as you drag it on there. It's pretty simple to understand how presets are gonna save you a bunch of time, especially if it's an effect you do a bunch. Might as well make it into a preset. That way you don't have to go drag on each effect every single time, change the values. Might as well make it into a preset and then use it in your video. By the way, if you don't feel like making presets or you just want to add to your preset library, my website, briandelmata.com has some of the best presets and plugins in the game to help you save time, level up your videos. And actually right now there is a summer buy one, get one free sale going on. So if you're watching this video before the 21st of July, 2023, if you add two packs to your cart, you're going to get one for free, four, two for free, six, three for free, and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and show you how to make presets in After Effects and then in Premiere Pro. That way, if you guys want to make your own presets and save yourself a bunch of time, you can do that. So let's go ahead and just keyframe that hue and saturation that I had before just to spin around a little bit. You can see now if I play it, it strobes a little bit and then it's done. Let's go ahead and add on just one more effect just so you can see how you can do with multiple. Let's add a Gaussian blur, keyframe the blurriness. After it strobes, we bring up the blurriness. Now this isn't an effect that I would personally use in a video. I think it looks quite bad, but this is just an example of how to save keyframe values on effects and that way you can make your own presets. Basically all we do is just control click on hue and saturation and Gaussian blur and then go up to animation, save animation preset. And then inside of your user presets, you can just name this whatever. We'll name this bad effect just so we can see. And now when we go into our animation user presets, it's going to be there. Let's go ahead and just delete both of these effects. And now when we drag on that bad effect preset, wherever we have our playhead at is where the keyframes are gonna start. And now we can see we have that effect taking place. In Premiere Pro, it's a very similar process. Let's add on HLS instead of hue and saturation. They just don't have that in Premiere Pro. Keyframe the values. We'll go ahead and add Gaussian blur, make a very similar effect just for example, keyframe the blurriness. And now when we play that, we have an effect that looks like this. Again, not a good effect in my opinion, but if we did wanna go ahead and save that as a preset, we just control click on both of those effects, right click, go to save preset, and we can name this bad effect again. And now there's actually a few different options options in Premiere Pro. It's scale, which is basically just keep the effect proportionally to how long the clip is. Anchor to endpoint is basically just move the first keyframe to the beginning of the clip. And then anchor to out point is basically just moving it all the way to the end of the clip. So we'll just go ahead and click scale for the sake of the tutorial and click okay. Now, if we go ahead and delete both of these effects, and drag on our bad effect preset, you can see we have that effect taking place. And the thing that's crazy to me is I see a bunch of advanced editors still not using presets or making their own presets. And I can just show you a great example of how presets can save you so much time. Say we wanted a transition between these two clips right here. All I need to do to make a little spin transition is to go make a new adjustment layer. And then from my motion warp preset pack, I'll have it linked down in the description if you're interested. Just go ahead and drag on any of these presets. Make sure to line up the keyframes with the transition. And then once it's rendered out, you have a transition between these two clips automatically done for you. You can now go ahead and change these values to make it more unique or leave it alone. And since we have this in a link composition, if we click Control S and then go back into Premiere Pro, you can see in Premiere Pro, we have that exact same transition already done for us. So go explore, find presets that you like that you think will save you time that match your style and then go ahead and take those presets, change some of the values and make them into your own. And then you can use them in projects. So the third thing that I wish I learned a lot earlier would be learning the keybinds of the software that you're in. So if either Premiere Pro or After Effects or any other editing software, learning the keybinds is gonna save you so much time. For example, some of the ones that I use in After Effects all the time is obviously Control S. It's just to save your project. I'm constantly doing that. That way I don't lose any progress in my 
that project. And then Control D to duplicate a layer, Control Shift D to split a layer. If you highlight keyframes and click F9, it's gonna auto easy ease them. So I'd suggest you take a little bit of time away from editing, maybe watch a 10, 15 minute video on keybinds, write down the ones that you think you'll use a lot, have them on your desk next to you while you're editing. And then when you wanna save time, you like look down, see what you gotta do, and then you'll eventually pick it up. Now, the fourth thing I wish I learned about a little bit earlier was investing in plugins and finding plugins that can help you save a lot of time. You can get plugins for After Effects and Premiere Pro, and they're basically things that aren't native to those softwares. You actually have to go out of your way, install them, and they help you create something that you actually couldn't in the software before. Now, there's a huge, huge list of plugins, but I'll give you a few that I like using, two that I actually made, and then show a few other ones that I use. The Shake Sauce is by far the best shake in all of After Effects. You basically just go ahead and find a preset that you like, double click it onto your clip, and then you have shake done. You can go ahead and customize and keyframe those shakes to whatever you like. So I'd highly suggest Shake Sauce. And then another plugin that I highly suggest that I created is called Workflow. Basically just helps you create different types of layers way quicker. For example, if you wanted to create a text layer over this clip length exactly, all you have to do is click text. It's gonna create it this exact length and it's gonna inherit all the data from the character here. All the things that you use a lot in After Effects, it basically just saves you time there. And then a few others that I know are pretty good is Flow, basically allows you to use the graph editor a little bit more efficiently. Dehancer Pro gives you the film look really, really quickly and easily. And then there's obviously Boris Sapphire, which is a huge collection of effects and transitions. And then we also have Red Giant Universe, which is basically the same thing, just a little bit different. But go out there, find the plugins that you think you're gonna use in your specific editing style, download them, and trust me, it will save you a bunch of time. And then the fifth and final thing that I would suggest is just don't let yourself be limited by your resources. I would go ahead and if you don't have the best computer, don't worry, I started off with a terrible, terrible laptop 10 years ago, not even close to what I have now. You can edit off your phone. There's so much access to free information now. Like when I first started, all these tutorials that people are making online just weren't as common. So there was only a few people that you could learn from. And I'm super grateful from that. But now there's even more people that you can learn from. Those are the five things that I wish I knew when I first started editing. Drop a like in the video, subscribe to the channel. Peace.